Welcome back. Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to be covering some basic panel data methods and regressions. Uh, panel data is when you have uh, multiple observations for each individual person, firm, state, country, whatever in your data. Right? That's what a panel data is. Uh, and so, uh, of course, the data sets that we've been using so far uh, have not been panel data. They've either been cross-sectional, uh, which is when you have one observation per person uh, or firm or whatever, uh, which the waged one data, or they've been time series data where you have one thing observed in many periods. Okay, panel data, we got multiple things in multiple periods. So we're going to bring in a new data set. So we're going to use foreign again, uh, and we're going to use um, a data set that's also from the Waldridge data, like the wage one data it was, it's crime, the cr some crime data. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Uh, this is a panel standard panel data format. Technically, it's what's called the long format. Uh, there's also what's called wide format panel data, but most of the time in economics, you'll be working with long format. Although sometimes in finance, you'll see, you'll see wide format. But don't worry about that. Anyway, uh, so let's look what we got. So first of all, we have county here. Uh, so this is some data on some crime rates uh, by county by year. Uh, so we have the same county multiple times. Notice that county number one is included multiple times. And we have it uh, in 1981 and 1982, 83, 84, 85, 86, and so on. Then we have other counties also over that same time period. So we got county number three also from 81 to 87, county number five, and so on and so forth. Within this, uh, we have the crime rate, C-R-M-R-T-E. Uh, we also have the number of police per capita. And that's what we're going to be looking at uh, today. Uh, so we've loaded in our data. So uh, we're going to do some packs and panel data stuff. We're going to need the panel data package for that. And that is the library PLM. It stands for Panel Linear Model. So we're going to load that in. So Panel Linear Model, what it does is it, it works a lot like a regular uh, OLS linear model, but it needs to work with some panel data. So we're actually going to not be working with data frames for this. We've been working with data frames this whole time, or time series objects, but mostly data frames. Here what we're going to be working with is a panel data frame, a P data frame, okay? So we're going to need to take our crime data that we've already loaded in as a data frame, and we're going to need to declare it as panel data. We're going to need to tell R not just, hey, this is some panel data, but also here's the individual variable, the variable that tells me what individuals I'm looking at, and here's a variable that tells me the period that I'm looking at, what times I'm looking at, okay? Uh, so we're going to declare our data to be a panel data uh, set. So we're just going to call it crime.p, just for pan the panel version of the crime data. And that's just going to be pdata.frame, uh, the crime data that we already have. And now I need to tell it what the parts of it this are that actually give it the panel structure. Like, how does it know that I want county as the individual individuals that I'm looking at and year as the time variable? How does it know that it's not, oh, um, urban is one place and not urban is another place? Uh, so right, I need to tell it. So I'm going to need to tell it what the index of this is, and I'm going to use a vector here. So the first thing in the vector is going to be the individual variable, and that is, of course, county. The second very, uh, thing I'm going to put in is going to be the time variable, which is year. So if I do this, I now have a new data set, which looks exactly the same, but now it knows that county is the one that's telling me what the individuals are, which individual counties I'm looking at, uh, and year is the variable telling me what my different times are, the time variable. Okay. So I've got my new data. Uh, let's go ahead and run a panel model, okay? Now there's a lot of different kinds of panel models that you can run. Now conveniently, PLM can handle pretty much all of them, at least all the basic ones, right? It can handle what, uh, fixed effects, it can handle random effects, it can handle first difference models, lots of good stuff, okay? So let's run all three of those, why not? Uh, so let's go ahead and run fixed effects first. Uh, so a fixed effects model uh, is, a, is also called a within model because it only focuses on variation within the individual observations, right? So we had county one, we had county two, we had county three. Basically what a within model is going to do or a fixed effects model is going to do is it, it's going to say, I'm going to basically take all the variables that I'm interested in. I'm going to calculate the mean within each county and then I'm going to subtract that mean out, which means that the only variation I'm going to have left is within county, right? All the differences between counties, don't want it, not interested in it, tossing it out. I'm only interested in the variation within counties, right? I'm comparing a single county to itself at different periods of time, okay? So uh, we're going to do it with the PLM function. We're going to be, like I mentioned, regressing the crime rate. Let's go ahead and actually do the log crime rate, why not? And let's do it as a function of the number of police per capita. 
Okay, we're gonna do it with the uh, crime.p dataset. Uh, and now we're gonna need to tell it uh, what kind of panel model I want to run. So I'm gonna need to tell it I'm gonna, what kind of model do I want. Uh, and there are a couple of different options. We're gonna use the, like I said, the fixed effects model, which here is called a within model because we're only looking at variation within individuals. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. Uh, and let's go ahead and bring in Stargazer. And let's look at it with Stargazer. There we go. All right, so it looks like uh, police per capita is positively related to the crime rate, which in this, I mean, we're not, it's not saying that more police cause crime. Probably what's happening is that the high crime rate means that lots of police get assigned there, but that's what, that's what we're looking at. Okay, so. Uh, we've done a within model. Let's also do a random effects model. That's like, that's another common one that you might run. A random effects, uh, basically what it says is that each individual uh, county has a different intercept, but we're not going to let it be whatever it wants to be, which is, what, which is technically what we're doing with the fixed effects model. Instead, we're going to say it's going to follow a normal distribution. Okay, that's what it's doing. But it's the exact same code. Uh, so let's go ahead and do random effects. This, of course, was fixed effects. Random effects. Uh, so all we got to do is change the model type to uh, random. There we go, random effects. Uh, okay, uh, let's go ahead and do a, f a first difference model as well. So what a first difference model is, uh, is that instead of... Um, uh, is, it, it just takes each variable and it subtracts the value from the year before, okay? So, you know, if we're looking at our crime data here, uh, we're going to have as the police presence, right? Okay, so let's say we're looking at 1983 for County 1. It's going to be the first difference. So instead of it being this number right here, it's going to be this number minus this number that's going to go in there. So it sort of does a similar thing with, with, with fixed effects in that it takes out some of that uh, individual variation. It, it focuses on the differences within a different county in different years, but it's not strict in quite the same way. So we're going to do a first difference. And we just got to do FD for that one. Look at that. Uh, okay, so We've run a couple of different ones. There's also some other models in there. You can look at the help file for PLM. There's, for example, a between model. Uh, so the within model only looked at variation within counties across different years. The between model only looks at variation uh, within years across different counties. We don't use that one too often uh, in, in economics, but it is there. Okay. Uh, one thing you might be familiar with with panel data and specifically talking about fixed effects and random effects is the Hausman test. Uh, which allows you to compare the results of the fixed effects and random effects models and see if they're different, right? And the reason we might want to do this is that random effects take some additional assumptions above and beyond what fixed effects takes. Uh, and so if those assumptions are wrong, then the random effects model is going to be biased and we don't want that. However, if they're right, if those assumptions are right, then it's more efficient, smaller standard errors, and we do like that. So we're going to check if they're different. If they're different, that suggests that probably the fixed effects is the way we want to go. If they're the same, uh, then you know, might be able to get away with random effects. Now, in practice, in economics, we will typically run this a thing, and then even if it passes, we still use fixed effects. So I don't really think there's a whole point to it. But let's run it anyway. Uh, so we're going to run a Hausman test comparing random and fixed effects. Okay. Uh, this is the pH test. And all we got to do is take the pH test uh, and feed it our different models. So we got fixed effects and we have our random effects models that we created earlier. We run that. Uh, we do reject that they're the same, which suggests that we're going to favor fixed effects in this scenario. Okay. Um, we might also, one other thing we can do with a panel data uh, model is that we can include a lag of something. Uh, so you might want to regress the, uh, the, the log crime rate, not just on the number of, on the uh, number of piece, police there per capita, but maybe also on last year's crime rate, right? So we're, so basically does the number of police per capita affect how crime rate changes from one year to the next, right? So we're going to take our same model here. Uh, let's go ahead and do it with fixed effects. So we're going to fixed effects with a lag. 
and all we got to do is do a lag right there of log crime rate. We can run that. Uh, and then when we do stargazer on that one, what it's going to show us is that we have in our model as an independent variable the log of the crime rate in the previous period. which is indeed what we have right there. There's the lag of the crime rate. Now be careful with this lag function. Be sure to only use it inside the PLM command uh, because there's another uh, lag function in R that does something different. Uh, and so if you use the lag function outside of PLM, uh, it will often use that lag function instead, which you don't want, instead of the PLM's lag function, which you do want, right? There we go. Uh, now, one common thing that you might want to do with a fixed effect, a, a, a panel data model, especially a fixed effects model, is to cluster your standard errors at the uh, individual or group level. All right. So the command for doing this, we're going to use COF test again. Now you might remember we've done clustered standard errors before uh, with a function called COF test, and we're going to use COF test again. Now, when it comes to panel data models, uh, the COF test works a little bit differently, uh, and I don't even have the, uh, the code memorized. So I'm just going to paste it in from earlier. So there we have it. Uh, so this is COF test here, uh, and what we are feeding it uh, is our panel data model. So we're going to get our, our fixed effects model. Okay, uh, and now this does get a little bit confusing, I admit. Um, but we're, we're feeding in our model, right? Just like we've done before with COF tests in order to get robust standard errors or clustered standard errors. We're using VCOV HC just like we used before to get robust standard errors, except this time it's going to give us clustered standard errors. Like I said, a little bit confusing. This is the kind of thing I would recommend just sort of copy and pasting the code for rather than thinking about it too hard. Uh, within the, however, this time we can't just give it the VCOV HC. We also have to give it some information. We're going to give it the model that we're working with again. We're going to tell it the type of clustered errors we want. Uh, here I've done the HC0, uh, heteroscedasticity co uh, uh, co consistent type 0. There's some other kinds in there. If you want it to match what you do in Stata, that's SSS is the type you want here. And then I'm going to tell it what kind of clustered errors I want. Uh, and I'm going to tell it that I want group standard errors, uh, which is the individual standard errors, right? So the individuals here, uh, as opposed to a time standard clustered error. I do that. Uh, and of course, I get my clustered standard errors for my regression model. Okay. That's about it. That's the basics of how we can work with some panel data, how we can get things like fixed effects models, random effects models, first difference models, run a Hausman test, get some clustered standard errors, include a lag in our model, all kinds of good things. Uh, that's it. I will see you next time.